No one likes a pie more than me. Well, so I thought until I discovered that the Scotch pie is the most popular savoury product in Scotland. And here's why. It's traditional. Every game, you've got to have a pie. What makes a good Scotch pie to me is plenty of meat, and as long as it's not too greasy. You know, a good filling, lots of, you know, crust on the, the outside as well. It's just beautiful, quite fiery, toasty on the outside as well. Beautiful, so it is. Can't whack it. The best way to eat a Scotch pie is the way I'm eating it just now. It's not too warm, it's just nice for eating. And I like brown sauce on it. Just right down the hatch. Break the crust off, right down the hatch. So the footy fans love them. And although Scotland doesn't have a world champion footy team, sorry lads, it does have a world champion of Scotch pies, Airdrie Baker's JB Christie. See, here we are in the shop. Um, as you can see, we make much more than pies, but proudly positioned at the front of the shop is our Scotch pies. And this year, our endeavours were rewarded with the World Scotch Pie Award. An accolade indeed, with any kind of pie getting the pastry right is key. And Andrew's Bakery has perfected the art of Scotch pie crust. The dough really wants to be well developed so that you get this nice, silky dough that you're able to pull apart and it's very workable and malleable. It's June's job to use a machine called a waddle that stamps out the pastry into cases. When the shell first comes off the waddle, it's too soft for us to use. Uh, and we find that, and as more bakers, most bakers will find we get bellying and it collapses. We allow it to sit for three days to dry out, and we call it curing. Uh, and after the three days curing, we find that the shell is firm enough for us to then add the meat to. Uh, and we give a nice firm shell that gives the, the good contrast on the finished baked product, that you get a nice crispy shell with a nice moist meat filling. These pies are not blind baked. The cases are just left out to dry. That's why they're so crisp. And the meat itself, it's, you know, it's 90-odd it's percent beef. Now for the filling. How do they get that signature spicy flavour? We like to think that, that we're different and we're better than other people because of the then blend that we put into that meat of, of the spices that we use, which I won't give away, but the spices that we use give a slightly spicy scotch pie, which some people think it's got a bit of a kick to it, um, but most people enjoy it. Andrew's Bakery makes over 100 dozen pies fresh every day. That's 1,200 individual pies finished by hand. So that's them in the oven. Scottish flour, Scottish meat, local butcher, made on a table in a Scottish bakery by Scottish bakers and baked in a Scottish oven. This isn't just a pie, it's a national staple steeped in pride and tradition. Having shaped, filled and baked the pies, Andrew now has to feed 1,200 pie-hungry Scots. I wonder where you'll find them. We have a new customer in Albion Rovers. Um, first home game today, which we're supplying the pies to. Uh, it's a local derby against Clyde, uh, so hopefully lots of pie-eating. Pie-eating at football matches, quite a traditional thing. Father and son go along, watch a game of football, eat a Scotch pie. He's got to get them out while they're still hot. And he's got another thing to do too. Yeah. Nice one, Andy. Now it's over to Sandra and Margaret to shift Andrew's pies, which doesn't look too difficult. Okay. That's okay. Thanks, Sandra. No bother. It's a good pie here at the Rovers. Before half time is over, there's some bad news for the last fans in the queue. Scotch pies are all finished, they're all sold out. That was the best Scotch pie I've had at a football ground ever. There's nothing to beat a good Scotch pie. The home team are winning, and Andrew's had a result too. Have you sold all the pies today? They're all fin they were sold just after half time. They were all sold. They were all no sold. Good. Everything, yeah. <laughs> good. They've all gone. Everyone's hungry, everyone's happy. And it's a win as well for the home team. So, good day all round. Andrew's Scotch pies are the real deal, and they're giving me inspiration to make my own historical version. Hello, Andrew. Those pies I saw look fantastic. 
Yeah. So you are using hot water crust pastry as well, I we take use, it? We use hot water. Good reason for using hot water, because we like to help pre-gelatinise the starches yeah. in the flour, yeah. which helps give you the firm crust and the nice crispy crust that you're looking for. And then is the lid, is that dry or is that going to be a, almost a fresh no, dough going the, into it? The, the lid on the top of it is, is, a, is the same dough as, as the base, but it's, but it's a fresh dough made, made that day. Yeah. Uh, and what, what we do is we pin it very, very thinly. And it, I suppose it helps with the process, but it also helps with the texture of the finished product that we'll dust that with a coarse rice flour, mm. which helps with the eat of it as well. Oh, that's a nice idea. How long have you been doing this then? I mean, have you always been a baker? <laughs> I, I, I'm third generation baker. My father was a baker, my grandfather was a baker before me. My dad was a baker, and my brother's a baker, and three of my uncles are bakers. It's funny when we all got together, you know what it's like as bakers. Sometimes you, you're in work and you, you're talking about what you do. When you're outside work, you're talking about what you do. You, you can never, ever get away from that right. way of life. What I'm going to make is my version of a scotch pie. Now, I'm so, it's going to use a lot of, sort of old ingredients. And it is quite tricky because, as you'd appreciate, I'm using a hot water crust pastry and I'm going to try and get it around that mould and I'm going to try and put the stuff in it and I'm going to try and put a lid on it and try and make it look like a scotch pie. So it's going to be... I might even get you to give me a hand, Andrew. Well... Hot water crust pastry is made by melting the lard into hot water so the fats are absorbed into the flour. It makes the pastry really smooth and strong. Now I'm going to add this hot liquid to the flour. So initially, just get your fork in there, turn it round. I'm just getting the spoon in there at the moment, and I'm basically just trying to bring it all together into one single ball. What I'm going to try and do is just try and smooth it off a little bit. I've basically just brought it together at this stage. As it cools, it will solidify, because the lard wants to go back to being hard again. You can actually put it in the fridge, and it'll instantly pretty much solidify. Do you know one of the things I miss about going is, is actually the camaraderie in the bakery. I miss that. I think it, it's it's it's. Um, I think bakers are slightly mad. I think you have to be to get up at that time in the morning. Now that one is about right. Pick whatever you want to use to shape the pastry. I find a glass ramekin about right, but a jam jar will do. I'll tell you what, I'm going to run with that one. Get this in the fridge for about five minutes, chill it down slightly, and then I'll be able to use it. Over here, I have my mutton. Now, I'm using mutton rather than beef. And again, this goes, this dates right back. And I don't know whether this is Scottish or English. I think uh, the, the history is that the Scotch pie originally came from England, but obviously we then took it. Of course it, it does. But we then took it and perfected it. <laughs> <laughs> is what happened from there. Um, mutton originally, I think, was probably a cheaper meat, especially yeah. in the north of the country. Uh, and, and was in favour. I mean, you, you speak to many old customers and they'll say to you, you know, that the best thing they remember about a scotch pie is when they bite into it and the grease runs down their chin. Yeah. And, you know, from lamb or mutton, you, you would get that more. The flavour of mutton sort of went out of favour maybe about 45, 50 years ago and everyone wanted, preferred the taste of beef. Yeah, there almost... are still mutton pies about, but, but not so many. Yeah, bad. not quite rare. I understand that. I'm just adding a little bit of lamb gravy to this. Again, just to soak it down a little bit. I've got some salt. And I've got some white pepper as well going in there. Also some mace. Again, one of those old spices that have been around for many, many years. And nutmeg. The last time I added nutmeg to a pie, it'd probably be a custard tart. You know the, um, mm -hmm. you know when you put the nutmeg just floated on the top? Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. I'm just going to mix this together. Some spices and gravy add flavour. If you want to make beef scotch pies, it's exactly the same process, just adjust the seasonings a little bit. Then, if I get some paper around the outside, some string. Can I use your uh, finger there, Andrew? <laughs> right there. Thank you. So you need two fully professional bakers in your kitchen and you'll be absolutely fine. Now, what I've got in there, it's given it that tension, which is going to give it that rigidity as well. Now, the lid itself will sit... sit right on the top of that. When you add the lid, tuck it down inside rather than on the top for that proper scotch pie look. So, at this stage, you pop this pie in the oven 
Again, 200 degrees centigrade for about 35, 40 minutes. It'll be beautiful and golden brown. But to achieve that golden crisp on the outside, you crack an egg, a little bit of egg wash, and then brush the top of the pie like so. And that will make it shine and dance when it comes out of the oven. Now, I've got some cool ones here. That is absolutely perfect. And you can see all the juices, the fat that's poured out around the outside. But these, it's like going back to almost medieval pie making. And there you have it. You've got, actually, I've seen pictures which are not too dissimilar to this. There you have your good old fashioned scotch pie. There's something old school about the look of these pies that really adds character. Andrew, I'm dying for you to try this one. Oh, so am I. I feel I need to be the size of Desperate Dan for that one, but yes. <laughs> We're going to have to wait a little bit longer, but I'm dying to see what it's going to taste like with that mutton in there as well. Mm -hmm. 